All right, guys, I'm back with another video. So some people were asking me how to do this, and at first I didn't know. So uh, the ideal came to me today to try this out, and I tried it out, and it works. So I'm going to share this with you guys. And basically what I'm doing is, as you can see, both this mesh and this mesh both have uh, the same material on it. But as you can see, when I activate this key or deactivate it, only one of them uh, gets uh, occlusion masking. So it allows you to control which meshes have occlusion and when they will uh, be occluded. Uh, such as if you had a locked door, for example, and you didn't want the character to be able to see through the wall, this is how you would approach this. So it's called primitive data, custom primitive data, and it allows you to uh, change the values of uh, on materials. Uh, much kind of like how we did with uh, the collection parameters except these allow you to do it on an individual basis and you can still um, so inside of Unreal Engine whenever two meshes uh, of the same type same share the same uh, material I believe they have this thing called batching and it might I don't know if it happens regardless of of if they're the same mesh or not but I do know that if they are the same mesh and they have the same material then Unreal Engine will actually batch those together and so you'll only get one draw call for both um, for both meshes even though you have not instanced them and that's called auto instancing so there is a CVAR, but I don't remember it right off the top of my head for actually disabling and enabling that feature. But it was introduced back in 4.22. But anyway, let's go ahead and move on. So creating custom primitive data is actually pretty easy. You cannot do it for a Boolean value, so we're going to have to hack this. Uh, I don't really consider it a hack, actually. It's pretty uh, innovative, if you ask me. But uh, that's up to you to decide. So I just held down one and I clicked while holding down one and it drops a, uh, a float value here. Uh, I right clicked it and converted it to a parameter and now I'm naming it. And so the default value, ignore that because I don't think it actually even respects the default value once you check use custom primitive data. Uh, if you try to set that here, it'll still be zero. I'm pretty sure it'll still be zero. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's still zero. So we're gonna saturate it, and that's like a free clamp. It clamps it between zero and one. It doesn't cost anything to do that. And then I'm gonna do a one minus, and that's just going to invert that value. If we don't invert that value, then, uh, it makes it less intuitive exactly what we're doing here. I was going for an enable occlusion calling, but uh, this works better. So we're going to multiply. And what that's going to do is if we multiply this value by zero, then this will be zero. If we multiply it by one, then this will be 1500. So it acts like a switch to allow us to turn it on and off. In this case, it's the max distance uh, that this can be before it turns off. And so if the max distance is zero, then it'll always be off. If it's one, then it'll just be the, the default 1500. It won't turn off until the static mesh is 1500 meters or centimeters, I mean, away from the character. That's pretty much how you do that. Now, I'm not going to go into uh, like doing line traces and stuff like that. There's other videos on how to do that and most of you probably know how to do that. So I'm just going to do this in the level blueprint. So I'm going to do go over here, go to open level blueprint. 
And then on begin play, we just want to initialize uh, these to be off. One means disable. Uh, that's why I called it disable occlusion mat occlusion calling. Uh, I should have said occlusion masking, uh, but you know what I mean. So I did that. I just did that on this one. This uh, this one has a different material function that does the same thing, but. Uh, I did that one separately just so I could show you guys this stuff as I come through and uh, make modifications to them. So I'm going to hold down Alt and drag this out, press R, and then make this smaller. And then I'm going to hold down Alt and drag to duplicate it again. And so you'll see I moved that guy out back a little bit, that spawn point. So I'm going to come over here to this one and I'm going to browse to that asset and then shift select these and press the back button. And now, uh, what I can do is I'll just select this one on the right and I'll right click and create a reference to it. And we're going to get the static mesh component. And you might have guessed we're going to set the custom primitive data. And it's a float. Uh, you have vector 2, vector 3, and vector 4, and float. Those are the ones that custom primitive data supports. It does not support Boolean values. And so I'm going to set that value to 1. Now the index, I did not explain that, but I'll go ahead and explain that. If I have two of these, uh, each of these floats are only going to take up one index. But if I make this a vector 3, convert it to parameter, and make that a custom primitive data, uh, then you'll see these numbers 0, 1, 2, 3. That means that this is actually, I guess, a vector 4. Uh, but that means that the red, green, blue, and alpha, all four of those channels are going to take up one index each. So 0, 1, 2, 3. And then this one would be 4. You see? And if we had uh, two of these, and this started at 4, then it would be... 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So that's how that works. I just wanted to point that out to you guys so that you all understood. Now I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste that over here. And I'm going to paste it right here as well. And right here we want it to be on. Uh, we want it to be on. I mean off. On, I mean, zero is on because we're inverting the value, remember? So this is disable. So if it's zero, that means false. That means no, we're not disabling it. One means true, means yes, we are disabling it. And that's why I named it the way I did. Uh, disable occlusion uh, masking is what it should have been called. Uh, but you'll see we're inverting it right here. That just makes it less confusing. And so I'm doing a flip-flop here, and I'm just doing a keyboard, keyboard. And then you can select this, and over here you can press that, and you can press a button, and it'll change it to whatever key you want. So this is a flip-flop. So the first time it's going to uh, enable it, it's going to enable the occlusion calling or occlusion masking, and then you press it again, and it's going to disable it. And so you'll see the one on the left still has it, but on the one on the right, we have disable occlusion masking enabled. And so if we press F, it disables or it re-enables occlusion masking. So as you can see, uh, 
that's not uh, occluding over there. Just in case you were wondering, it's actually just rotating. But yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. I hope uh, you found this helpful. And uh, if you did, make sure to like down below, subscribe, hit that bell notification, and I will see you in the next video.